Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Church in the Word. We're here faithfully Monday, excuse me, Monday, <laughs> Sundays at 9 uh, a.m. We are Church in the Word. This is uh, Brian and uh, your faithful servant, Brunel. We are here looking up. Uh oh, oh, there we go. Oh, I forgot we had that one. Anyway, <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. How's good morning. everybody doing? Good morning. Like that background? Very nice. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know reason why? Yes, it's Palm Sunday. Yay! It's Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Uh -oh. uh, open us up in prayer and then we're going to talk. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We love you. We honor you. We give you all the glory, the honor, the praise. Thank you for allowing us to be here this beautiful Palm Sunday, Lord God. Bless all those who are listening or watching the broadcast uh, this morning that something be said uh, that will encourage them and uplift them lord god and motivate them lord god to um, get more into your word and to worshiping you and praising you father god touch anyone who is uh, having sickness in their bodies lord god lift them up uh, today father god we thank you for uh, these blessings, Lord God, we thank you for your patience and your mercy and grace, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. This is a week that we, um, probably one of the most holiest weeks of Judaism and Christianity. Uh, we start on Palm Sunday where the king of all kings comes in triumphantly on a donkey. Mm -hmm. And they put palm leaves down on the ground saying, Hosanna, Hosanna highest and it ties into our why he came first and foremost he came to die for our sins um coming into resurrection uh, uh good friday where he resurrected again on sunday when he rose from the dead and so we're celebrating that to, you know celebrating that this week it's also passover for uh coming up um for uh the Jew, uh, jewish uh, religion as well and so we're judeo-christian so we kind of tie it all together and that if he had not died you know for our sins mm -hmm. or told for our sins there would be no resurrection or no need for resurrection mm -hmm. so or need for the death mm -hmm. so uh today we're gonna continue on our uh lesson and it is go ahead Dan. let's go fishing and that's our series that we've been going through and we're going to continue on the series aims is to be disciples and make disciples and our mission is to love God, love people, and make disciples. Right. In our foundational scriptures from Matthew 28, 19, from the Amplified, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Help the people to learn of me, believe in me, and obey my words, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And he said to them, follow me as my disciples, accepting me as your master and teacher and walking the same path of life that I walk. And I will make you fishers of men. I'm going to park there just for a second because this is really key to, uh, and, and this should have been our foundation scripture because it's called us go fishing. Mm -hmm. And he's going to make this in one of the things that we're going to get into very, very soon. But I just want to lay this foundation first mm -hmm. because I found that if I, uh, in times past when I've done Parts of this. Matter of fact, we have a whole series, you know, uh, uh, book and DVDs and stuff, uh, which I'll show next week. Um, you know, evangelism made easy, and so it's a course on taking you through kind of what we're talking about now. But I wanted to make sure I included in our conversation, in our teaching, uh, for me and for others, that uh, one, um, we're called to be disciples first and foremost, and be disciple makers and for some reason, we've gotten in such a hurry and got into prosperity and all the other things. I forgot the basic foundation of who we are is disciples. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so in verse uh, in Matthew 14, 4, not 419, it lets us know that I will make you fishers of men. But if we let's go back to that first portion of that verse. And it says, and he said to them, follow me as my disciples, accepting me as your what? Mm -hmm. Master yes. and teacher. And teacher. And doing what? And walking the same path of life that I walk. Right. So that's 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 
take a look at that part of the scripture right there. And this is the Amplified Bible. And so when it talks about this, it breaks it down. That's why I like the Amplified because it makes my job a whole lot easier versus me trying to explain it and pulling up the definitions. Right. The Amplified pulls out those words, keywords and expounds on us so that way it makes it easier for us mm -hmm. to learn because a lot of getting an understanding. And so my goal is to make sure you have an understanding, but it says walk the same path. Right. And so the same path is that we being a Christian mean, mean being Christ like. Mm -hmm. So being Christ like that means it's not my way, right. it's not it's my not will. My no, it's his way. His way. Amen. So I just wanted to make sure we stop to understand that, and then we'll get into what it is to be a fisherman, how to be, how to fish, and all that kind of cool stuff, mm -hmm. and how to make disciples. We'll get into that, but I wanted to make sure we got into the foundation first of uh, what it is to um, be a disciple and what it, what it is our mission is. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep on. And today's lesson is let's go fishing. Number three, lesson number three. Why should I go make disciples? Oh, is that good? Why do you think mm -hmm. that? Why do you, why, why do people not do that? What do you think? People don't want to, don't do it. Some maybe because they don't know how. Mm -hmm. Some uh, because they don't want to uh, be correct and, and follow Just rebellious? Jesus. Yes. Okay. Hey, Amen. Those are good ones. <laughs> Absolutely true. Let's keep going. All right. Oops. Ah. Thank you. Number one, we are called to be ministers of reconciliation. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18, but all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ, making us acceptable to him and gave us the ministry of reconciliation so that by our example, we might bring others to him. So if you look at the other scripture, the other scripture showed us that we're supposed to walk like Christ. Mm -hmm. And then in second in, in second Corinthians, this scripture is letting us know that. So as we walk like Christ, folks will see our good works. Mm -hmm. And so that way they want to walk like us because we're walking like Christ. So that's why the scripture talks about follow me as I follow. Yes. Ooh, follow I, Christ. Yes. Amen. Go ahead. Okay. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Hey, I can go on now. <laughs> uh oh. All right. The ministry of reconciliation involves the proclamation of the gospel and, it, and its assurance that forgiveness of sin is available in Christ. Right. Sin prevents us from having a relationship with God, but Jesus' perfect, sac Jesus perfect sacrifice on the cross made atonement for sin and brought away a restoration to mankind's relationship with him right and so when we take a look at oops there we go when we take a look at this little little caption here mm -hmm. um the wages of our sin was death yeah. so when one man sinned sin entered into the world meaning adam so when adam fell into sin adam and he fell into sin all creation all, all mankind mm -hmm. fell into sin so there had to be before jesus came they were just like we're you know we have a Passover, so they would have Passover. The Passover, they would sacrifice a lamb, and the lamb would be a a, a scapegoat. Mm -hmm. It didn't erase sin; it didn't atone for sin. It just erased sin for the year. And so, okay. once a year, they would come and they would do this major sacrifice. But Jesus had to become and make. He became sin for all. He did not sin, but he became sin on the cross. That he took our sin. It was a perfect sacrifice and atoned for our sin and brought reconciliation back to mankind. Mm -hmm. That's what John three sixteen says that the gospel of the world. But he gave his only begotten son. That's whomsoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting. And then verse 17, it goes, but he did not come into this world to condemn this world, but through him we might be saved. And so we don't have a choice. We're all in sin. And so we must be reconciled back to him by believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's keep going. So Jesus reconciled us to God. Now we can proclaim that people can repent of their sin and be right with God again through faith in Jesus. So let's take a look at Romans 5 and 10. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Romans 5 and 10. <laughs> For if while I was looking at that one, sorry. Okay. And I didn't it's see a good. switch. Uh, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. It is much more certain, having been reconciled, that we will be saved from the 
consequences of sin by his life, that is, we will be saved because Christ lives today. Right. And if he had not lived, if he had not rose from the dead, then we'd be living, we would be against the dead, mm -hmm. dead religion because the only reason why, I'm going to say that, the only reason why Brian Cochran, I can't speak to you, but the only way, the only reason why I serve him because if he could overcome death, hell, and the grave, and he died for my sins because mm -hmm. he loved me that much, then shoot, you know, why would I serve somebody else? Mm -hmm. or, you know, if, or why would I even serve him if he hadn't done it? That's what the scripture letting us know that having been reconciled, and we have been saved from the consequences. Mm -hmm. Our consequences was death, eternal separation from God because of our sins. We don't know, no matter how good we think we were, it didn't matter. Because of one man's sin, sin entered into the world. We're all, as I said earlier, we all need salvation. And it only comes through Christ. It can't come through you spinning on your head three times, speaking in tongues, water baptism. doesn't mean that you can be a good person in your own marriage. Your righteousness is a filthy rags. So through Jesus Christ's Death. That's why you know. That's why the, the Palm Sunday was so important because he knew he had to die for our sins, and so he had to also be king and prince of all. So when he came in, he came in humble, based upon scripture. Mm -hmm. Scripture showed that he prophesied that he would come as on a donkey. He would come humble. Mm -hmm. He could have come on a white horse. He could have come on a legion of men, but he had to come humble because it wasn't about him being king now right. on the earth. Mm -hmm. It's being king of our hearts. Right bringing us back in reconciliation, bringing us back into to fellowship with our Father through what he's going to do on the cross. That's why Palm Sunday is so important to us because if he hadn't fulfilled prophecy, again, the Bible is true because he fulfilled prophecy. Amen? Let's, let's keep going. So God has given believers the ministry of reconciliation. That's right. That is, he uses us to tell the world that he, that they can be reconciled to God through Christ. And that's our job. And, and that's why it's so important before we get into the mechanics of how to do it, mm -hmm. You first need to know you, you're supposed to do it and that you should want to do it. We talked about it last week and the week before last, mm -hmm. and I'm going to repeat it again. It's, it's, if we don't, if we don't, if we, just like my, my wife just got a brand new car, right? And, and she got a great deal on the car and we had to go all the way down to the end of the little earth to go get it. But she's going to tell folks about this car dealership because they treated her good. Um, she got a fair deal. So why wouldn't we do the same thing about a guy that, that knew about us that went so far beyond and beyond to die for us, mm -hmm. to reconcile us to back to him, why would we tell people about a God that saved us? Mm -hmm. And so if we can be reconciled, and I was a filthy yeah. wretch, tore from the floor up, deserved death because I don't care how good I thought I was, I was a hellion. And because my righteousness is those filthy rags, he made me as white as snow, mm -hmm. and because his blood covered me and redeemed me and brought me back into this standing. So that's why we need to be telling the world that we have been reconciled back to him and you too can be as well. No matter how bad you think you are, we can tell, we share our testimony, which we'll talk about that later on. We share who we are, why we, you know, how God redeemed us. Mm -hmm. That's where we start. That's the starting point in what we're going to be talking about in the future. Amen. Amen. Number two, as kingdom citizens, we are Christ's ambassadors. In this way, we become Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. Through us. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. In 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 20. Let's read. So in 2 Corinthians 5, 14, verse, uh, verses, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 5, verses 14 through 20. For the love of Christ controls and compels us, because we have concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, so that those, said that, so that all those who lived would no longer live for themselves but for him who died and was raised for their sake. So from now on, we regard no one from a human point of view according to the worldly standards and values. Though we have known Christ from a human point of view, now we no longer know him in his way, in this way. In this way, right. So we know him as king because of what he did on the cross for us, basically. Therefore, anyone in, is in Christ that is grafted in, joined to him by faith and in him as saved. Stop there, just for a second. Mm -hmm. And the cool part about grafted, grafting is, and, and, it, and, it's a, and, and the grafting is like, it's a, it's a medicine term and it's also a term for, for horticulture, right? Mm -hmm. Where when they take uh, uh, something that was two separate things and then they cut it a certain way mm -hmm. and, they, and they fuse it together, they graft it together so now it's one. Mm -hmm. So that's the meaning of that. So same thing when you have lost a limb or lost something, they were grafted. They were like like they were 
take, say, say for instance, you have a third degree burn on part of your body. What they would do is they would take some good skin and put it on the bad skin and graft it together and put it on there. And in time, it will heal and merge and come together as one. Like the horns in the lemon tree. And I always wanted to merge and graft. There you go. <laughs> Ooh, come on, somebody. <laughs> There you go. There you go. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that joins us by him in faith, by faith, because he's our savior. So, so it's it's a better term for us and an understanding for us that that we're not just saved, but we've been brought into, we're inherited, we have been inherited, and we are, I mean, excuse me, we've been adopted and grafted into the, the kingdom of Christ. And so the kingdom of God. So that's a wonderful thing, a wonderful place to be in. So keep going from there. It says he. He is a new creature, mm -hmm. reborn and mm -hmm. renewed Come on, somebody. by the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening brings a new life. Right. So we're no longer an old man. We're a new man. And because we have been renewed, all things, so all your past sins, all your past transgressions, all your iniquities have been thrown into what's called the sea of forgetfulness for him to never bring it up. That's why he says there was no, not no condemnation. So now that you're free, you don't feel ill. So you're not, so our worthiness to, to share the gospel, our worthiness to help people be reconciled is not by us, but it's through the Holy Spirit that redeemed us anyway, that brought us into and joined us, been joint heirs with Christ and joined us by faith in him as our savior. So now it makes it easier because it's no longer I, but Christ in me that's what I'm sharing anyway. I don't share about my goodness. My goodness is horrible, right. but his goodness is incredible because his goodness is the one that redeemed me. Mm -hmm. So if I just share how he redeemed me first and foremost, then, then then they'll go, wow, why does he have joy? Why does he have peace? Why does he get blessings? Why are things happening good for him? Even when bad things are happening, you still have joy. Mm -hmm. And we can share that with others because why? We know why, because we've been redeemed. Right. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we, have, we can rejoice and know that he is reborn. He was reborn and renewed every day by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Amen. All right. But all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself uh -huh. in Christ, making us acceptable to him, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation so that by our example, we might bring others to him. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sin against them, but can canceling them. Oh, canceling them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation, that is, restoration to favor with God. So we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were making his appeal through us. We, as Christ's representatives, plead with you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. And that's what we're supposed to do to others. So I wanted you to know that. So guess what? The next part is... Bam. Number three, what does it mean to be an ambassador for Christ? Glad you asked. Ambassador definition. <laughs> <laughs> an accredited diplomat sent by a country as its official representative to a foreign country. Right. So before I go on, and this is this is so key to our our really understanding who we are, because one of the things I've seen we do, we tend not to really talk about we are royal people of chosen generation mm -hmm. that were set apart, we're special, not because we're special, but he's deemed us special because he's the one that sanctified us. Mm -hmm. And so that diplomat term, an ambassador term, is something that you step up and become royalty. Mm -hmm. There's a saying that I say, you know, used to say a lot, you know, stop walling with chickens when you're an eagle. Mm -hmm. So that chickens like to eat their own feces and eat whatever they want. An eagle soars, an eagle, an eagle rises up. It's the same thing for us. When I was a child, I spec reason understood as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. God will God will ordain you. He's already sanctified you, but he'll take you to the next level in him as an ambassador because you're called to be one. Yeah. Doesn't make you or I any more special, but it lets us know that 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 greater he that's in us than he that's in the world, and we're representing the king, and not of this nation, not of this government, not of this world, but we're kingdoms of citizens of heaven, and because we're kingdoms of citizens of heaven, that we are his ambassadors going forth to show forth his goodwill, going forth, let me, let me, let me before, I, before I get too far, <laughs> I, I'm about to take off on this thing. This, this, this is getting good to me already. <laughs> Christians are God's ambassadors in that, in that they have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel in 1 Thessalonians. Thessalonians. There we go. 1 Thessalonians. Thessalonians. 
Be tongue tied for it. There you go. <laughs> Thessalonians 2 4. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. Stop. Right. So I just want to point this little point out right now that we have not just disciples, but we're disciples. So it's not just the original 12, not the original apostles. It's all of us have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, yes. his word, mm -hmm. to take it forth. Keep going. All right. uh, to, uh, approved, uh, Go ahead. Where but just to? as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, that the good news of salvation through faith in Christ. So we speak as if, not as if we were trying to please people to gain power and popularity, but to please God who examines our hearts, expecting our best. Right. And so we there's a, there's a scripture that talks about, and I'm paraphrasing it, you want to please God or please mm -hmm. man? I'm doing it to please God because I was, excuse the expression, more worldly successful when I was in the world. Mm -hmm. But when I came into the kingdom, it was no longer about me. I'm not yeah. boasting on my, my yeah. own and boasting of who I am and what I've done. Now it's all about him. Yeah. So when I speak, it's not speaking about me being popular. Yeah. That's like, you know, like now I know that the lessons we're doing right now are yeah. not going to be popular because most folks don't want to do it. Yeah. So I'm not doing it. Otherwise, I preach a different, you know, I mean, we have the whole loaf. And this is part of the council of God. But it's important for us mm -hmm. to teach the truth and that that if we don't do it, then I'm trying to please men. Yeah. And so we're doing this not to please men, but to please God, because we have to teach the whole counsel of God and let people know that there's a job that we're supposed to do and that God's going to hold us accountable. If I don't teach it, then mm -hmm. God's going to hold me accountable. Now that you know, now he holds you accountable. Yes. Amen? Amen? So examine your hearts. Expect God expects you to do your best. And so doing your best, it, it, well, we'll get to that later. Let me stop. As we go through this world, we represent another kingdom right. found in John 18:36. And it is our res responsibility to reflect the official position of heaven. That we carry and that we are. And we're not going to get the scripture today because I, 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 I want to keep it shorter. Otherwise, it would have been a whole lot longer. We are in this world, but not of it in John 17. And 16. the reason I'm putting this is where we're ambassadors of a different kingdom. We represent the king of all kings, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. We're not of this world. We have been bought with a price. We're no longer our own. We represent the king. Yeah. And because we represent the king, we can't hold on to the things of this world like we talked about at the very, very beginning of our lesson. Right. It's no longer about us. It's us, yes, first being learners of Christ, now being doers of Christ mm -hmm. by making disciples, sharing the gospel, helping people to know a God that's going to save them like he saved us. Yes. Amen? God's ambassadors are to be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves in Matthew 10, 16. Right. And so, again, an ambassador, so we're able to, because, because we enter ambassadors, are the representatives of, of a nation. So we have, like here, we live in the United States, if you're, if you're here in the United States. So we have ambassadors that are in the, almost every country in the world, mm -hmm. and they represent the president. They represent the government, mm -hmm. and they have to be smart and wise and shrewd. They don't just give away everything. They don't just do everything. They have to have an understanding of our system, mm -hmm. And what the king wants or our president wants and our nation wants of us to accomplish as being in the other country so that way we're spreading goodwill and then we have resources that we can help. But we have to be shrewd. We just don't give everything away and, and then not get nothing in return. Right. That's the world system. Right. So we have to be innocent because we're the you know, United States is the strongest government in the world, sort of. Um, we have the biggest might. We had, had the most amount of money. But. We have the king of all kings, the creator of heavens and earth, the creators of everything. We can stick our chest out and be bold about it, but being innocent because you know what Christ did? When he came in on his, you know, on the donkey, he didn't come boldly. He came innocent. He came riding on a donkey to show folks that, yeah, I'm able to do it, but I didn't do it because, yes, I'm the king. Yes, I'm Lord. Yes, I'm God. Yes, I'm able but I'm going to be innocent as a dove yeah. to show you how awesome I am because I'm not going to show you by my might, by my power, but it's by the spirit of God that walks through me anyway. Amen? All right, let's keep going. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, we must take the message of our King to the ends of the earth in Acts 1-8, imploring men and women everywhere to be reconciled to God. Right. And so we're filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, Acts 1 8 is you, know, you should be you know, you should be witnesses unto me first in Jerusalem, Judea, 
and this area to the utmost parts of the earth. And so we first got to be, you know, and we'll talk about that when we get into our lesson, that through the power of the Holy Spirit, that you witness to your members of your, of your family, your workplace, your school, your friends, all those that are around you first before you go out and say, okay, I'm going to go to, you know, to, to Botswana and go to, you know, go to Africa and minister in Africa. First start at home. So, so he's employing men and women everywhere to, to help people to reconcile because we have the truth. The truth is in us that the victory that they can have is in Christ Jesus. And we share that through the power of the Holy Spirit that's in us. Amen. And so we take that message of what we know. Our baptism is just, it's not for us just to, to, to walk holy. Yes, it helps us, enables us, but it's also empowered us to be his ministers of reconciliation. Amen. Every believer plays a part in this ministry of reconciliation. One plants, one waters, and God brings the growth in 1 Corinthians 3, 7. Right. And so I found that when I first started doing the work of the evangelists, mm -hmm. Let me, let me park here just for a second because this is really important. This is the part that I, I wait, you know, I, I I need to kind of pounce on just for a second. That that I used to think that when I would evangelize and I would share the message, I was waiting for them to get saved. And when they didn't get saved, I got mad, you know, and I looked at myself like, what did I do? What could I done better? And then the Lord showed me one time through us that, that when we first got married, oh wow, go from there. Um, when we and I first got married, I would say something, I would say it rained yesterday. And you go, No, it didn't. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's just I don't remember what the situation was, it doesn't matter. And then somebody at work or somebody at church or somebody somewhere, you know, somewhere else would say the same exact way. And then you would come on, guess what? God told me da 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 da. And I used to get just just like flaming oh, no. angry about it <laughs> because I couldn't understand it. But if we put the, if we again, I should have probably put the scripture up, but I didn't, so I apologize. But if you look at it, that's the that's the gist of the scripture of First Corinthians chapter three verse seven. One plants, I was the one that plant. Somebody else watered, but God yeah, gave her the is. increase. So God gets the increase because again, my little selfishness of wanting to see the response of what I know is not important. It's that we all part, we all are part of the body of Christ. We all have a part to play in the ministry of reconciliation, as well as in the problems that we're talking about. But today we're talking about. The ministry of reconciliation. So don't worry about, and I want to ultimately say, don't worry about you seeing the fruit. Your job is to water, to sow, to plant the seed, and then God ultimately will get the glory because it's no longer I in me. It's all about Him. Amen. Amen. We're almost done today. Praise the Lord. As we proclaim the gospel, we act as peacemakers, and God blesses such in Matthew five and nine. We tell and live out them his message of reconciliation. Lives are changed and God gets the glory. So right. So that's what a plant, water, God gives the increase. Yes. So this ties it all together that our job as disciple makers is that we don't know the process that we're in. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter because maybe you planted a bunch of seeds and then mm -hmm. I come in and, and water it. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is the one that's going to do the work anyway. And through, through the whole process, God gets the glory because Again, we are ambassadors, so we can't stick our chest out as ambassadors thinking it's all about us. Right. No, we represent the king. Mm -hmm. So since we represent the king, then our message of reconciliation is based upon the promises and the plan of salvation that the king of all kings has given us, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and that, that we bring that ministry of the gospel to other folks so that way they get saved. So that way we do get a crown of glory. We do get some rewards, all that kind of stuff, which we possibly may get into in this series, but I don't, mm -hmm. we never have, we may do that. Because I never had before. So we'll get into that you know, real soon as well. But again, lives will be changed because we've done our part. Let us pray. Let's pray. <laughs> That's fast and easy. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you and praise you for you called us to be, first and foremost, disciples. And uh, as we become disciples, I mean, I mean, we're learners of you, that we mature. And as we mature, Lord God, we look for opportunities to now go out and do the work that you called us to do, which is go make disciples. Lord, we're understanding in this process of this lessons that we are to uh, be ministers of reconciliation that we're learning this week, Lord, that, that we share the gospel of peace, the gospel that changes lives, the gospel that transformed our lives, and we share that with others that they can be reconciled back to you. We're not saved to sit, Lord God, we're saved to serve. We repent for the things that we've not done thus far, the opportunities you've given us to share the gospel, and we've not done it. We repent right now. Forgive us, Father. We thank you, Lord, Lord that you're faithful and just do. Forgive us for all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and we thank you for it even right now in Jesus' name. You also call us, Lord, to be ambassadors 
for you as well. And as ambassadors, Lord God, that we go representing you, that it's no longer I, that we show forth your good work, that you get the glory of what we do and say. Again, as, as ministers of reconciliation and ambassadors, that we step up to be priests of our homes and priests in our communities and also being leaders uh, to help folks to, to lead them to you. He said, if you be lifted up, you draw them in unto yourself. And so, Lord, we do that right now. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. We don't want to leave our broadcast today without giving you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. He died for your sins. Mm -hmm. And he is, you know, he's called us to be the ministers of reconciliation. So if you watched the lesson that the wages of our sin was death, but he gave us a wonderful gift through Jesus Christ. And one of the reasons we're celebrating this solemn occasion today is Palm Sunday, him coming in triumphantly. Mm -hmm as the king on a, on a donkey to die for your sins, to die for my sins. And so all you have to do, it's a real simple, quick prayer. If you don't have to spin on your head, you don't have to give up everything, just give your life to him and through the power of the Holy Spirit, he'll change you and transform you. So repeat this prayer after me if you'd like to give your life to Jesus Christ and, and be reconciled back to him for those that have been backslidden as well. Father God in heaven, I'm a sinner. I believe you sent Jesus to die for me. Lord Jesus, I confess in my mouth and believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead. Save me, Lord Jesus. I love you because you first loved me. I thank you for such a great salvation. I'll serve you forevermore. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you just prayed this simple prayer, you are now what is called saved. You have been, you have become a new believer. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new, like in the scripture we were talking about earlier. You are a new creature in Christ, and we want to get you some information, and I still haven't made the new one yet because I'm making some changes, some stuff. So hit me down below. Let me see if I got Yeah, this is an old one. Um, yeah. Yeah, hit me with this. Oh, yeah, that's my, the top two of the most important ones is my cell, my email. Um, that's my email address. That's my personal hit me up on my phone. And the other one is my cell number. So give me with those. And I got some great, great resources that I want to get into your hands because now that you're a new creature in Christ, the enemy is going to try to come kill, steal, and destroy you. The other way you can connect to is by uh, hitting down you know, hitting down below in the comment section. Uh, if you're on Facebook or, or YouTube and hit the comment section, I'll see that you say, I gave my life to Jesus. I'll send you my email address and see the information that you can reach out and touch. And so that way we can make sure you get you the next steps of your growth is learning about your assurance of, of some things that you have now that you have assurance of. We need to teach you those things to make sure you grow. Before we close, we, we, I want you to know that Monday through Friday, we have what is called Fresh Fire 5.30 a.m. prayer. Uh, we are here faithfully Monday through Friday from 5.30 to 5.45, 15 minutes of touching and agreeing. Uh, it's, 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 uh, we have a prayer line. The number's there. Uh, we'll have it up on the screen as well. Join us, join us, join us. Amen. Amen. Any closing statements? Thank you. Have a wonderful week. Amen. God bless you. God we bless thank you. you. And may God keep you. Amen. And love you. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.